In this video, we're going to build a new town in the west of Ireland. But first, we need to discuss Galway City, which has long been regarded as a bohemian town, popular with all shades of artists, writers, and wandering minstrels. Galway's population is growing quickly, helped by the buildup of a successful IT and medtech cluster to the east of the city, with giants like Boston Scientific and Medtronic making Galway their home. All of this success has caused rents and house prices in the wider metro area to rise steadily, as housing supply has failed to keep up with demand. A familiar pattern, seen in Dublin and around the country. Ireland has four provinces, but politically the Irish state is divided into three regions. The southern region is made up of Munster, plus the three counties of Carlow, Kilkenny and Wexford. The eastern and midland region is Leinster, minus these three counties and the northern and western region, which consists of Connacht plus the three southern Ulster counties. While these regions don't have much power in the Irish system, it is noteworthy that the EU has downgraded the northwest to a lagging region, which makes it of vital regional and national importance that Galway be allowed to thrive. The easiest way for a city to grow is to sprawl outwards, but Ireland's national planning framework expressly discourages sprawl in favour of compact growth within cities and Ireland's discretionary low certainty planning system makes it hard to densify within cities, even for social housing projects like those refused in places like Ciaran and Castle Gar. So the government has tied Galway up in a bit of a bind. If the city can't grow out, and it can't grow up, how can it grow? Galway's story mirrors that of the Irish state more generally. Highly successful at doing the hard part of attracting capital into the country and generating demand, whether it's for workers, housing or hotels. But the state struggles to build things, at least on time and on budget, in a nation that's known for its builders. It's like a football team that's creating endless goal opportunities but repeatedly blazing it over the bar. And those who can no longer afford the higher rents are disproportionately drawn from the artistic types who don't work for the multinationals, forcing many to move out, which has a hollowing out effect on the city's creative core. Galway's growing pains are felt not just in affordability, but in mobility, with severe traffic congestion in the city centre and a bottleneck at the Quincentennial Bridge, the only major crossing point over the River Corrib. Estimates have the ring road being completed in 2029, all going well, but this is five years away, and given that these plans have been ongoing for 15 years, people can be forgiven for scepticism. So what can Galway do? How can it build with ambition? to improve both affordability and mobility for all of the metro area's residents, ideally in years and not decades. One promising idea is something called Transit Oriented Development, or TOD, which entails building at scale near transport infrastructure. It's an approach that's been used for decades in countries like Japan, Sweden and France, and in our view it can play a big part in alleviating Galway's growing pains. It's the idea that you build an urban area around transit rather than the other way around. The principle is that it's actually easier to build homes around an existing transit network than it is to build transit around an existing city. To model what a TOD might look like, we chose Oranmore Station, which is a promising location for a number of reasons. It's located within the Galway metro area, eight kilometres east of the city on the main line that serves Athenroy and onto Dublin and Limerick, close to Oranmore town. With its free car park, the station is already a popular park and ride hub. The upgraded Mutton Island wastewater treatment plant allows for future population increases. Plans are already in place to add a second track between Oranmore and Galway, known as a passing loop. The new Bus Connects program includes Oranmore, which will include new bus corridors and cycle lanes. And finally, the area has a beautiful setting, overlooking Oranmore Bay, making it a desirable location in its own right. If we can improve our bus infrastructure in Oranmore and simultaneously get this pass and loop constructed, we stand to see a much better public transport offering for the people of Oranmore and the surrounding areas. I know people who will come from Athenry, park here in Oranmore and get the train in just to avoid the traffic in Galway City. So really Galway City is the bottleneck and Oranmore is potentially a part of the solution to allowing people to access the city much easier. North of the track is the area to be densified, approximately 13 hectares which is marked by mature trees to the north and northwest, both of which we sought to retain. When designing such a TOD system, it is good practice not to have all the jobs at one end of the line and the houses at the other, so as to balance passenger demand in both directions. This doesn't mean that each station along a TOD corridor needs to have both jobs and housing, but they should at least be interspersed, 
Some stops may have more jobs, others may have more housing. In the broader region, the 1,000 new jobs announced by Dexcom for Athen Rye will help establish the wider area as a bi-directional TOD corridor. As it happens, Galway County Council has been a couple of steps ahead of us when it comes to TOD plans for Oranmore. Nobody within this framework, this ideal TOD, is going to have to walk further than 400 metres to access this centre point, and this train station is the centre point of that uh, Garon framework plan. The Council's so-called Garon framework is a superset of the area that we're focused on, and we'll return to the Council's plans later in the video. The first step in modelling this TOD was to add the second track, along with a cross bridge for pedestrians, cyclists and people with reduced mobility. The office area, located near the station, assumes that office workers come from both local and distant areas. The area prioritises pedestrians and cyclists, with on-site parking to meet quick parking needs. A pedestrian way in the centre connects each block to the station, making the wider area more walkable. Due to the higher density near the station, we felt it wise to include an extra parking facility here, which will serve commuters heading to the high density zone. The building is designed with a semi-open facade, using a wood-like column effect to soften the building. It connects to commercial buildings along the main road, providing easy access for pedestrians to move from the parking area to the station and office buildings. The rooftop includes a cafe, with glass walls to protect patrons from coastal winds, while affording them an unobstructed view of the bay. On primary roads, we've used asphalt with a width of 7 metres to accommodate cars and buses serving the area. On secondary roads such as these, we've used textured surfaces to signal lower speeds to cars, as well as for their pleasing aesthetic effect. Here we've included pocket parks as places for commuters and office workers to relax, with space for street vendors. Moving further to the right, we have these mixed-use buildings, which use a flat design and local materials such as sandstone and red brick. Some blocks include archways for pedestrians to take shelter. As we proceed up the street, we have a bus stop located at a nexus just beyond the bend in the road. Passenger stops are strategically placed on the main road, facilitating commuting to key locations. Just a quick note, we created these designs with a small team, and to sustain the channel, we're launching our PolyC membership program, which gives people access to our chat rooms, where we discuss everything from planning and architecture to politics and economics. Members can have their say on future episodes and engage with others in the community. So please join us at patreon.com forward slash policy. Now, back to the video. Moving further away from the station, we drop down to medium density housing, which features three floors, along with a basement level in some cases. A central park serves the entire community, designed as a third place for socializing, recreation, and relaxation. The park includes a stage area for events, a sports area, and a playground for children. Commercial kiosks and gazebos are included for various gatherings. Accessibility is ensured for cyclists and people with disabilities, and the park is surrounded by the existing lush woodland currently in situ. Other public amenities in the area include kindergartens for early childhood education, and a public library located in the centre. As we mentioned earlier, Galway County Council has been working on their own plans for this area, and they are impressive. As well as showing ambition in terms of scale, they include innovative features like upgrading the existing car park to two storeys and placing green space on top, which rolls down towards a public park. Embarrassingly for us, we found out about the council's plans pretty late on, so our designs deviate somewhat, though there is a degree of overlap. Also, our five to six storeys may or may not be above what the council envisages, but on this channel we like to be on the ambitious side, and retreat when we have to. In our view, the role of government in such a project, besides basic zoning, is to lay out critical infrastructure like transport, utilities and parking. Beyond creating these basic conditions, we think it's best for the government to let the neighbourhood evolve organically, through the choices made by residents and businesses. Our designs are merely a demonstration of the possible, as opposed to prescriptions of what should be. In any case, we hope to do a follow-up episode on Oran Moore, in which we broaden to the wider area and reconcile some of our differences with the Council's plans. We've included a link to the Garon framework in the description, along with a link to our policy membership program, where we hope you can join us to chat some more. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and slong a fall.